Hey everybody, welcome back to Tim Travels. This is Terry, your host. So, coming to you from the Costco Distribution Center in um, Monrovia, Maryland. Um, so, I, I'm i not gonna do like a real history lesson and stuff but today, but um, I did wanna um, answer some like questions that people have asked me and also maybe make a comment on on some stuff. So the first is I got a comment. So I commented on a video that Lyle at No Hippie Trucking and Transportation did. And he basically was like, I'm not leaving Prime. And, you know, he was talking about that. And so, you know, I made a comment and then some guy I don't even remember who it was. He was like, oh, you need to grow a set. And, you know, like, oh, he he had commented that, that working at Prime is like a 40-year-old living in their mom's basement. And and I was like, you know, working at Prime is, is um, works well for a lot of people. And, you know, he was like, basically like, well, you got to grow a set and get your own business so you can be home with your family and stuff. And I was like, you know, well, I said, you know, I've run a lot of businesses and I've made, you know, millions of dollars in revenue over the years and paid employees and had a great life and lifestyle because of my work. And, you know, not for nothing, but this place is, we got here last night um, into the general area and we just parked at a shopping center and you know, went, I, we went to my house and we got Chinese and hung out, you know, um, my, my trainee stayed in our guest bedroom and, you know, just got to hang out like I was a regular job, you know? So I like the freedom that I have at, at prime. I, could I go somewhere else? Yeah, sure. But here's what I, here's what I've learned over the years. And I mean, it's a saying for a reason, right? The grass isn't always greener on the other side of the fence. And, you know, there are people that are pretty well-known YouTubers that have left Prime or that are leaving Prime. And, and I'm like, hey, more power to you. But that's not, you know, but that doesn't mean that they're like more ballsy or they're more risk takers. Because I've taken plenty of risk in my life. But I but I know what I want at this point in my life. And I did a, I did a video the other day about being a part-timer. Now, let me, just, let me just say that you can't really probably, you're not gonna be able to take, you know, 10 straight weeks off at Prime because I think they have a 59-day rule. But my point was, if I wanna take two weeks off, as long as the truck payment's getting made, I don't think my fleet manager's gonna care that much. And even if he does, and by the way, you know, even when I was like brand new CDL holder at night, you know, I would, I would run like a scalded dog, but I would also tell, you know, but if I, I always took this at, I always took this tack. I always had this attitude. If I tell you I want to be home, then I'm not joking about it. And I'm not asking you, I'm telling you I want to be home. And so you know, a lot of trucking companies have this, oh, one day home for this number of weeks out. And, you know, like, and I think at night it was still, if you stayed out six weeks, it was still capped at five days. And I'm just like, you know, I, I don't know if I ever went over five days, but I, but I know that if I wanted to be home over five, more than five days, I wasn't going to like give them an option. I was just going to do it. Um, because any truck driver, you know, like if somebody, if I said, you know, I really want to be home for 10, 10 days and I've been out for, let's say six weeks and I'm a, I'm a guy that produces. If they're like, no, you can't be home for 10 days. I'll be like, oh yeah, you want to bet? I'll go home and not come back here. And I guarantee at the end, when I'm done being at home, I'll have a job waiting for me. You know, cause as I've also always told people, if you don't get a bunch of tickets and you don't put trucks in ditches, you're probably always gonna have a job. And I guarantee that you could go home, you know? 
Um, so, so anyway, there, there was that comment in exchange and I was basically like, look, man, um, I'm not, <laughs> you know, I'm 59 years old. I grew a pair at some point cause I got some kids, but you know, maybe they're shriveled up now or whatever. I mean, I don't really, I don't really care at this point, but you know, I, I've taken the risk. I, I know what I got. Um, I'm going to retire comfortably. Um, and this is that, you know, working at prime as part of that plan. But anyway, so let me answer a couple of questions that people ask me directly. The first question that somebody asked me was, you know, should they get an LLC before they sign a lease and, you know, do this? And my answer is unequivocal. Yes. You do not want to sign a lease without a corporate entity to have be the leaseholder. You want the trucks lessee to be that corporate entity. Um, LLCs are very popular. And by the way, I'm not trying to break anybody's, you know, like food source here, but I've heard, I've heard that the, um, the, the, there's this accounting firm that's, you know, works closely with prime drivers. And I've been told, and I don't know if this is true, and, and if it isn't, I'll issue a correction, but I just don't know. But I've heard that they charge like a thousand bucks to establish an LLC for somebody. Now, I don't know exactly what they're providing for that $1,000, but I can tell you that as an attorney, not an accountant, but as an attorney, I never charged a client that much for establishing any kind of business. Like even if I was putting together a Delaware C Corp, it probably wouldn't, you know, it might be close to that if I was, do, you know, like the charter was a very complicated. You know, but, but, you know, and there's more to putting together a C Corp than there is an LLC. But it, for an LLC, the filing fees are, are not going to be huge, um, even when they're expedited. It's something that most people could do on their own because you basically fill out a form and you just answer some questions and then you submit it. And most states you can submit it online, just use a credit card. It's 50 to 100 bucks. Um, so anyway, I share that with you, but you, here's why you want that corporate entity. Corporate entities will give you some liability protection, personal liability protection. Because remember, an LLC is a limited liability company. The limitation of the liability refers to the members of it. They're only liable to the amount of that they've put into the business. So in other words, if you have an LLC, and let's say you maybe have some partners, some other members, right? The limitations on their liability is what they've put into it. So for example, if you said, hey, we're gonna start this company, I'm gonna fund it with 5,000 bucks, right? And let's say you got sued and you lost the lawsuit and there was a judgment for 100,000. Well, the most that will be paid out is the 5,000 or whatever value can be stripped out of the LLC. But they're not gonna come after you personally as long as you obeyed what are called corporate formalities. In other words, if you didn't, if you properly use the money in your LLC, you didn't just treat it like a piggy bank um, and all the things that you purchased with the LLC's money were like legit business expenses. That's the key, right? And and what a lawyer would try to do is, it, it's called piercing the corporate veil. In other words, crossing, basically erasing that line between a person and their entity. And this is long-standing corporate law. So as long as you use, as you treat, and, and, I, and I use words with care when I talk about like, what the truck made, right? Because I've said this before, the LLC leases the truck. I don't lease it. And in fact, I'm not even, a, I'm not even really a member of the, you know, like I have a, a tiny interest, but I'm a W2 employee of the company that leases this truck. 
I get a salary and I get per diem. Okay, that's how that's how I'm set up, and that and my wife is very involved with that. And you know, I've talked to other guys, and I said, yeah, have your wife, you know, be the managing member of that LLC. That creates that gap, right? So, like, if I do something stupid behind the wheel, and somebody's like, "Oh, well, that LLC is that's just him," so we want to, you know, lean his house, and they couldn't lean my house for something I did, and because of other things, right? Like, we own the house as tenants by the entireties. That's a different set of laws. But you know, my wife is the one that runs the money. And, I, and I'm totally serious when I say this. I don't know what I get paid. <laughs> I get an allowance, but I don't know what I get paid. Um, but, you know, she's worked with the accountants and, you know, they said, yeah, pay him this much per diem and this much salary. And, and that's how it goes. So I don't get paid by the mile. I don't get paid by the trip. The truck makes money. I'm just an employee of the company that, don't, that leases this truck. And then later on when we buy... I'll just be an employee of the company that owns the truck. And by the way, we have it structured where we have the company that leases the truck and we have a separate management company above it. So the, actually the management company controls the entity that owns the truck now, or leases the truck. When we start buying trucks, each truck will have its own entity. Each truck will have its own entity. So that again is to just create space between people and companies, right? And and create space between assets. So like, let's say we had one truck that's red and one truck that's blue. I don't want both trucks in the same entity because if one driver makes a mistake, then I have two different trucks that somebody could say, well, you're gonna have to sell those to pay off this judgment. But if I have one, tr only that truck in that, it is the only asset in that LLC, then the most they could do is say, we're gonna sell, in a judicial sale, we're gonna sell that truck. Not, you know, so if it's the red one, they can't touch the blue one. So that's, that's, <clears throat> and again, this is, this is Terry, um, with experience in corporate law, this is how Terry does things. And Terry has professional, you know, Terry's company has professional advisors, right? My wife has advisors that we count on to give us advice and, you know, in the accounting field. Um, <clears throat> Cause by the way, I didn't take math in college, so I, sh I should not do anything with taxes. Um, but anyway, so that's, so I hope that answers the question and I'm, I'm happy. And I'm just checking my light. I still get a red light. Um, but I'm happy to answer questions about that too. And so the other, like, the kind of the other comment that I that somebody asked me about is, is, you know, like, kind of being your own boss, right? And, you know, I kind of described part-time working for Prime. And I use that word because... I think there is a way to have a very good work-life balance, you know, leasing or owning a truck at Prime. Now, the key to that, though, is that the work-life balance is not exactly going to look like you would see in normal, you know, like corporate America, okay? It's a different animal, but it doesn't mean that you can't do those things. So here's an example. If you have school-age kids, right, um, you may know that, you know, because over the years, there have been times when my kids were off of school, but I couldn't take the same amount of vacation as, you know, they were off school. And so, you know, a lot of times it's hard juggling parents' schedules and kids' schedules around school vacation time and also you know like everybody's kid gets off in the summer but not everybody in the in a business can take vacation the same week in the summer right like somebody's got to compromise and unless you want to just completely shut the business down and even like when I was in the military right we we, we would always come up with a 
a schedule. Like who wants to take Christmas off or who wants to take New Year's off? Like we divide up that time. So no one was getting, usually, if you were on a, uh, you know, an operational unit, no one was getting both Christmas and New Year's off, right? Because that, you know, we would, and I typically would take New Year's because you always, you always got a couple extra more days with New Year's off than you did with Christmas. So I'd rather have just more time. But as a driver who kind of controls this thing, it's your baby, you know, even if you have the entity, you know, you could say, hey, I'm going to take two weeks off. I'm going to take off on the 22nd of December because that's when my kids get out of school and they don't go back to January 4th. I'm taking that whole time off. And again, as long as you're able to cover your nut, you're, you're taking care of all your fixed costs, right? And, you know, I don't, Prime would love to have you run because let's be candid, when you're running, you're, you know, when you're making money by running, Prime is making money by you running. Okay, that's, that's just how this industry works. But if you're that solid performer, I, you know, I can't imagine that there is somebody's going to be like, no, you can't do that. Because first of all, they can't say that. Because you, because when, and here's the, here's the thing to understand about when you lease or when you're any kind of independent contractor. The IRS says that ev by default, everybody that works for a company is a W-2 employee, unless there are some exceptions, right? And one of the big exceptions is, you know, like independent contractors, but you can't, but Prime is always gonna be careful to not cross the line of control because control is what the IRS uses to determine if somebody, even if they're a 1099 employee, you know, 1099 independent contractor, if they're truly not an independent contractor. So, so like, here's an example. What, Prime is never going to tell me you must take this load. Why? Because that's too much control. That makes me sound like a company driver. Prime is never going to tell me where I have to fuel. If I want to buy expensive fuel, they're not going to stop me, right? They don't tell me the route I have to take. They have a few requirements that they put on me, like safety and, and service, but not stuff that's like minutia. They don't, you know, they'll, they'll be like, hey, you need to get oil change. Now, I don't have to go to Prime to get my oil changed. I can get my oil changed at, you know, a TA if I want to. That's my option. But they now Prime does have a, an interest in the truck being maintained, so they can say, "Hey, if you didn't get your oil changed, that's a breach of the contract." That they can do, but they can't say where I get it changed. Okay. Same with tires; they can say, "Hey, you're you're running unsafely. You need to get new tires." I don't have to get them from Prime, although why wouldn't you? Because there's bigger discounts. But so the control is the issue. But so, so the question that I'm kind of circuitously answering is work-life balance, right? And, you know, somebody said, well, you know, this is new. My wife's going to have to, like, get used to this. And what I, what I say is be truthful because this is true when I was in the military. You know, I, like I tried to prepare my wife for knowing that I was not going to be home. You know that I was going to be gone for long periods of time. I think that's also why a lot of times trucking companies like military guys. It's not because veterans are better truck drivers. It's because if a guy's mar was married in the service, his wife is used to him being gone anyway. It, it it like makes it easier to transition to the trucking lifestyle. But anyway, you you have to be truthful with your family, and you have to you know you have to. When you, you know, like, here's an example. I'm going to be home next week on, like, the 9th and 10th because my daughter has a concert, then she's in a play. And so, you know, I've committed to that. Now, I have to work with my fleet manager. He's never let me down. Um, and by the way, there was a company that was supposed to have me home for Father's Day and didn't, and I quit shortly. Like, that, that happened in June. I quit in July. So I'm serious about that. Um, so I, you know, I told my I told my fleet manager already. Hey, I need to be home on the 9th. 
I just need to be home for about 36 hours to see my daughter's concert and play and then I'll get back on the road. And he's like, yeah. So I fully expect that I'll be there. I have zero doubt. And that's important to wives and, and, and it's important to children, but they won't really voice it as much as a wife might. But if you say you're gonna be home, then be home. Now, if, if you're not home for some reason, it better not be your fault, you know? And if you got a fleet manager or, and this is true at any company, a DM that doesn't get you home for important events, even though you gave them plenty of notice, you need to fire that DM or FM or find another company. And I, and I, I would say that about any company. But like I said, when I was at night, I had a great, I had a great driver manager. Um, when I was at GP Transco, same thing. I never missed stuff at those companies because those guys took my request seriously and were, you know, worked hard to make sure I was there, you know, for important events. So I don't know if that answers the question, but you know, I, I like I said, I, I think just being truthful about what, what things are doing and, and just talking, you know, um, talking to your family, talking to your spouse. I FaceTime a lot with, with my, almost daily I FaceTime with my wife and my daughter that lives at home and then my older kids, I talk to them at least weekly, at least weekly. And I FaceTime a lot of times, sometimes there's a group face FaceTime. And you know, so the reality is I, I see my kids on FaceTime almost as much as they see each other on FaceTime because one of my kids lives in Iowa. You know, I have kids that live in Pennsylvania but not close to each other. They don't see each other on a daily basis. So I'm acting, just, you know, it's no different than if I was sitting in my living room with some of my kids. And you know, just being there for your family and, and when you need to be. Um, and I think that creates understanding. You know, my wife's like, hey, I like you to be home, but I like you to make a living and this is what you've chosen to do. And, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to come to Prime. It wasn't about money, it was about me controlling what I, um, what my work looks like. I never have had a problem making money. I can make money doing lots of different things. But I have had a problem making money at a good level in the past, but also controlling my schedule. Because even as an attorney, you know, if the court says you got a hearing, you know, absent some really great excuse, you got a hearing. It doesn't matter if you had already planned to go to Disney World. They don't care, right? They're not going to move it. So that's what I like about this job. Um, and I've gotten to the point, and it didn't take too long, but I got to the point where I'm controlling a lot of what I, what I do. Um, and that's, you know, and that along with the system that Prime has, I think is... You know, it's a great fit for a lot of people. And so, you know, that's why, I, that's what's good about it for me. Maybe that's not gonna be good for everybody, but it, but it's good for me. And I'm happy about it. So anyway, I hope that I answered some questions. Appreciate you tuning in. Um, appreciate all the subscribers. I think we're like at 685 subscribers. So that's really cool. Um, but yeah, we'll update you, let you know what we're doing. Probably just going to be running the East Coast for the next week because we got in seven days. I'm going to be back for the concerts and stuff, and it's that time of year. So, anyway, um, I will talk to you soon. And uh, go Hawkeyes. We're. Uh, I'm not taking this off. I'm not taking this hoodie off until Iowa is the Big Ten champion. Which maybe I shouldn't make that pledge, but. I think it's going to be a good football game. I think it's going to be a good football game. So I'm looking forward to it. And like I said, it's it's found money. It's found money if you're a Hawkeye fan. Uh, so anyway, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.